I'm uh, showing for the first time at the Exhibition Art Gallery in Martinsburg, West Virginia. There's, there's a sign, uh, Exhibitions Art Gallery. Well, this uh, is one wall of the show, and I, I gotta say, uh, this is the first time I've seen my own work all in one place, and uh, well, I have to admit it, I'm, I'm very impressed with myself. Well, I'm not all that impressed with myself, actually, uh, which is why I like to call this work Old Fart Art. And uh, I got in real trouble for doing this. Some of my really loveliest uh, artist friends told me that, that this was too self-deprecating and I should drop it. Uh, they said, Neil, you need to graduate from middle school and grow up and be a real artist. Uh, so I, uh, I sort of dropped it and then I sort of didn't. Um, because I, I've got to say I really can't quite take myself or all of this all that seriously uh, at this point. I just think it, the whole thing is a war. This is where a lot of these pictures started. This one is one of my early ones and it sort of was a breakthrough for me to do this picture. And I also, uh, this is where I started the business of uh, titling these things. Um, this is called Never, Never, Never Give Up. Uh, I'm quoting Winston Churchill. And uh, it's sort of, well, frankly, I painted it the other way around. But I realized if I turned it this way, it was uh, somehow had more spirit to it. It wasn't diving, it was ascending, and uh, that's what I like to do, to ascend. Some of my titles are whimsical, and some of my titles come before the painting is painted. I'm working on one right now for, uh, as a homage to my alma mater, uh, Princeton, and I'm calling it um, Princeton has as its, as its mascot uh, a tiger, and its colors are orange and black, so I'm doing my next picture, uh, calling it Scorching Tiger Lily Love. Thank you, Princeton. And it's all in, gonna be, it isn't even painted yet. It's in my head. And that's one of the things that happens to me. I, I get a picture in my head before I paint it. And sometimes I'm driving my car when I get a picture in my head. And I'm scared I might get, uh, arrested for driving and painting. I don't know, you, uh, would you call that a D.U.P.? <laughs> well, now, this is, uh, this is a drawing up here that I am, I am really fond of. That was a commission. And this girl was an absolutely gorgeous subject. And, uh, this indicates the way I draw. I draw, as you can tell here, a very, very detailed, very crisp. And, uh, and yet when I paint, I slip over into more abstract uh, and more uh, uh, fuzzy and splashy and sloppy. I was in a painting group 
And I said to them, you know, I'm almost schizophrenic. Uh, I, I'm one way when I draw and another way when I paint. And uh, I don't know what to do about this. And one of my favorite people in part of our group uh, said to me, Neil, why don't you paint like you draw? And that was a breakthrough for me, to paint like I draw. Uh, so I could have all that fun that I have when I, when I do uh, uh, detail. I love detail. I just get lost in it. It's, it's not very fashionable in the great art world, uh, but I happen to enjoy it, and I'm doing what I want. I'm doing what I want when I do these things. I don't care if it's fashionable or not. So right here is the detailed drawing example. And right here is Mr. Sloppy. So you gotta, can really compare the two styles and it's like a schizophrenic has done this. Well, here, here is another one I really like. Uh, it's a drawing with very specific, uh, these are mine. These are my daughters when they were teenage, and look at the way they're challenging dad, the way adolescents do. Who are you, anyway? I was truly falling in love with color with this. I mean, color is like, it's an orgy for me. I can't resist it. I mean, I'm sitting there, I'm painting with red, and suddenly yellow says, I've got, I've got to get on there with with the yellow, with the red, the red and the yellow talk to each other, and I get uh, very excited. And so when this painting takes place, uh, when I'm painting like that, I don't know what time it is. I start in the morning, and all of a sudden, I haven't eaten all day. Uh, I've barely gone to the bathroom, and uh, it's time for dinner, and I'm, I had no idea that's happened. These are done, all of them from here on, are done in the last two years. This is my breakthrough period where I did at least one every two weeks. It's like an explosion of work, uh, just kept on happening. And sometimes I get on a little bit of a roll with uh, a theme. I discovered an article in the New Yorker by a very famous lady botanist who said that uh, the sex life of plants uh, far more interesting than our sex life. In fact, they, they, they're better lovers than we are. So I began to think, uh, wait, maybe this should be a series. So this is one in the series. This is called Seaweed. Soon I'm going to do one about my lawn. I was thinking. You know, there are there's billions of little blades of grass, and all they do all day is make love. That's all, that's all plants can do, uh, make love and get eaten. <laughs> so, so I'm on this kick, and I'm imagining my dear old lawn and all those little blades so busy with each other, reciting love poems and uh, singing love songs. And, just having themselves evolve all day long, all night long, in front of everybody. So here is the first seaweed love. Um, here is my precious. He just simply popped up from nowhere. I uh, call this one Twinkle Creek. And here's where I've gone completely nuts with circles. I love circles because, uh, back to my philosophy about the universe, I believe we're all made of circles. The universe is made of circles. We are made of circles. We are, our cells are circular, our atoms are circular. So I do circles. And I've also noticed that uh, 
Abstract painters do their very best to avoid circles. Why do they avoid circles? Everybody wants to do circles. It's like they're afraid they're doing too many circles, so they avoid them. As for me, I can't do enough. Uh, I'm, I, I am rebellious of it, and uh, so circles are <laughs> circles sort of take over some of these pictures. I never do try not to do two circles alike. This is my garden. That's my neighbor's house. That's my fence. This is my my sexy lawn. <laughs> You can see what they're up to down here. I didn't realize it when I did this, but this is one of my plant sex pictures, I think. I should retitle it. Uh, Long Love, maybe. Well, you know, uh, to my absolute amazement, um, the local papers have picked up this story and I am now having my uh, five minutes of fame that uh, Andy or Warhol uh, used to talk about. Uh, he gave us 15 minutes and uh, I think I've already used up 10 and this is my last five. So here is, I'm on the cover of this little local Shepherd's Town Chronicle, which is where I live. And uh, they say, they quote me, they say, you've seen me around, he said, I love to dance, I have a lot of dance partners sprawled around town. Neil Delano Martin, that was the 80-year-old barfly you may have seen dancing late into the wee hours at Tony's and Stonewall's. That's me, party boy. It's called Institutional Jazz. And I'm trying to take this uh, sterile architectural form and interrupt it with my circles. I think of my circles as little sparkles, uh, little little bits of firecrackers to break up the uh, pomposity of the, of the architecture, hence institutional jazz. It is one of my favorites. And my, uh, my eldest daughter wants the original, so I'm not going to sell this one. There's something about this that just tickles me, so I have made it into note cards, and it reduces very nicely to little note cards. Most of these pictures do reduce very nicely. They also enlarge very nicely because they're so uh, crisp. Their line is very crisp, and the colors blaze out at you, I hope. Um, this one is, is called... Uh, you're only young twice. Uh, actually, I'm stealing from myself here. That was a headline I once wrote for an ad when I was an ad man working for David Ogilvie. All right. This guy is called Rebel. And if you look closely, you'll see one bird is flying opposite to all the other birds. He's the rebel. Oh, I don't know if you can see him. Try to see him, and then I'll point to him. Ready? One, two, three, point. There's the rebel. That's probably me. Not think about it. Um. This was an early one, and it's a little bit unlike all the others. Mostly pencil. Uh, but here are all these, you know, sensual shapes. I am very, very, very delighted with the sensuality of life. I think it's, it's a great celebration we're gifted with, and I love the 
think about it. So he's called Kidnap Me. Don't ask me why. Um, this was an early one. This is called Listening to the Old Brain. The old brain is the part of your brain that makes the really major decisions, I think, like who you're going to marry, what kind of car you buy, all the, all the big stuff. The, little brain, the, the, the old brain takes over on that. It's instinctive. Uh, it's like the, the, those uh, Greek gods called the Furies that to go out make mayhem, you know. Uh, now this one, I'm going to walk right over here. This one, I did a second time later, turned it into this one. They both bird shapes. And they're really very related if you, if you know what they are like I do. Well now up here, <coughs> I really like this little thing. This is family reunion. Um, again, the circles are just uh, dancing all over the place. They are the family, and, and uh, I love this. I love this bird. This is one of my own personal favorites. Well, down here, uh, I took a vacation from myself and did this. Uh, this is called Grandma. Pierre and me. I absolutely love Pierre Bonnard. He's my favorite painter. Mean, vicious old Picasso looked at Pierre's work and said it wasn't painting. Well, the hell with you, Pablo. This is painting, and I tried very much to paint the way Pierre Bonnard does, of course. I could never get there, but I gave it a try. So this is my dining room, and this is uh, a silver bowl my grandfather had made for my grandmother. And I got myself in there, so that's me. So this is Grandma, Pierre, hey, and me. over, squeeze up on here. Uh, this is one of the early ones. And uh, I was playing with circles again, but the circles all had little tails. Eventually, the circles lost their tails. And these little things with tails are symbols for me. You can figure them out for yourself. I am not going to tell you my, all my secrets. Uh, here we really have circles like crazy. This is one of my real favorites. And it is called, uh, It's All About Love. And this is a quote from Mozart, which is my favorite quote of all time, because Mozart he was asked, where does he get all his ideas? He was able to not only think of these great melodies and rhythms, but the arrangements, each part in the, in the orchestra, he'd write for the flutes, he'd write for the piano, everything. It all happened at once. And he said he didn't know where it came from. It just seemed to come from God. And he said, it's really all about love. And that, to me, is what doing something creative really is, whether it's dancing, which I love to do, or painting, which I love to do, or, uh, or uh, you know, uh, all those things are related. Poetry, painting, dancing, they're all related. They take you to a place you can't get to in any other way. You get, you get kind of free of yourself, your dumb, dull, old, day-to-day -day self paying bills. 
and that sort of thing. And you just fly. And that's part of what I'm doing here and part of what I'm doing when I'm dancing. I mean, if you've ever had a great dance with a great partner, you know where it takes you. It takes you to heaven, as far as I'm concerned. And the same thing happens when a poem takes form. So a lot of this, is, for me, is just a great deal of extraordinarily uh, unexpected, joyful uh, rapture. Do you see what I mean? Anyway, here we have, uh, where the heck is the egg? I'll leave it to you to figure out what that means. Yeah, but these guys are all in conflict with one another toward a certain goal. Uh, and uh, this picture is called Sky Dance. And I was watching a couple of sparrows uh, who were really literally having a love affair way up high in the air. Uh, they, they were just fabulous, uh, the way they were getting together way up in the sky. And sure enough, later they got themselves a nest and they had some babies. And uh, they come back each year, these fellows. So they were a big inspiration. Um, Here's another one of my uh, plant sex series. This is corn love. And this is another bee love. And this is uh, yet another tulip rapture. I am very inspired by this idea of the love life of plants. Uh, I'm astonished by my huge pine tree out of my, uh, <laughs> it's right outside our porch. And you know, that guy, every spring, he lets fly with what I would call lust dust. And it gets all over my car and it gets inside the house. And now here is what's fun about him. He sends off a cloud of lust dust and the wind takes it to the next county where it meets a girl tree. And it's so much more efficient than, than uh, you know, uh, internet dating. I mean, it, the plants are way in front of us in, in their uh, strategies to find one another and to reproduce, which is really their main purpose in life, to have more of themselves. And lucky creatures, that's, that's all they have. That's all they have to do all day. This, I do get a kick out of this. This is called Chiro Pablo. I, I think Pablo Picasso's art is unbelievably, stunningly brilliant. I know he was a kind of a real bastard as a person. His so much of his art is based on death, like a lot of Spanish art, like the plays of uh, Lorca, um, the whole ritual of the bull ring is all about death. Uh, um, and a lot of his pictures are about death. And this is one of the grimmest of the bunch. This is a grim black and white picture of a mother with a dead child. Oh, how so I decided I would cheer that up with my sparkles. And I invaded the picture with, with sparkles and turned some of it into color from grim gray and, and black or white. Um, I should probably not have done this to Pablo. But I have some friends who say it's perfectly all right. Uh, artists all through the ages have acknowledged one another in their pictures, copied each other, competed with each other. 
These, uh, your art does not live in a vacuum. So, <laughs> I mean, I went, when I went to Princeton, we had a class, uh, a painting class. We went to New York to a bar, and there were guys who later became real famous. They were uh, arguing, drinking, stealing each other's women. They were people like uh, Jackson Pollock and de Kunick, all these guys, while well, they were still poor. My uh, Princeton teacher was a guy named Steve Green, and he discouraged me. He thought my painting was a little too pretty. And he said, besides, you can never make a living as an artist. You can't afford a, a station wagon and a house like you're going to want. Neil, he said. Meantime, right next to me was a guy who was painting amazing, huge canvases, who then got shown in uh, some of the greatest galleries in New York. Museum of Modern Art, and then all over the place. His name is Frank Stella, and he not only has a station wagon, he has a Ferrari. He is doing very well with his pictures. If you take a look at this and then come over here and look here, uh, I was playing with enlargements at uh, Staples. Staples makes giant pictures out of little pictures. This is that. Believe it or not, I'm amazed at it. It, that little tiny picture becomes this giant thing and in its own way it's even more interesting because it picks up the canvas texture here. Can you see these little textures? And this is called Stargaze. And uh, frankly, I'd love to see uh, a number of these pictures of mine blown up to that size. Uh, it's possible technically to do that. All right, this is a, this one is called Tree of Glee for obvious reasons. Here's an earlier one where all well, my circles still had tails. And it's called Young Love Remembered. Um, here, I depart again and try to capture what Bonar does. This is a take on one of his most famous paintings, which sat in the Museum of Modern Art when I was a struggling young copywriter in an ad agency in New York. I used to go over to the Modern Museum and sit down and stare at this picture instead of having lunch. So I'm calling this Eating Pierre with a Dessert Spoon. Because here Bonar does these extraordinary pictures of tables and food and love. I did this one called Fall, and the idea is that in the fall, a butterfly loses its spots. And then I thought, that's a little bit bland, so I, I copied it and then worked on the copy, and it became this. So once in a while, I play a little joke on myself something is not as good as it should have been, so I'll do it again. You're looking at a picture now that has, is framed. I uh, used to think the frame made no difference whatsoever, and now I'm seeing uh, what a difference it can make, and, and I think the frame does a lot with this picture, which is, is called Too Much Picnic. And once again, uh, I'm out in my garden and, and playing around with uh, my idea of what a landscape might be. And of course, this is the kind of picture that's favored by people who buy pictures. So if I were to pander to that, I guess I'd do more landscapes. But uh, 
I'm doing this because I want to do it my way. It's my party. Uh, once in a while, uh, I also uh, steals from myself. Right here is a real little detail that I liked a lot. I, I liked what was happening in there, so I did it at its own, as its own painting, and sort of took the detail and made it into a painting, and that was a, uh, originally, it was obviously flower shapes, which became flower shapes that became um, what would you call this thing? Well, I call it petal cake. It looks like a looks like a, a little popover cake, which is, by the way, the last picture in uh, this show. I uh, I've come to the last picture and. I've said everything I can think of to say, and um, if you've hung in this long, I am deeply grateful. And also to my friend David Heatwall for, for letting me get these things up on a wall. And for my five minutes of fame on the front uh, pages of the newspaper, and for my friend Ernie, who is holding the camera, and his... Uh, lovely, his lovely partner, Regina, who does my, who does my uh, website and my brochures. Uh, wait a minute, I'll get the brochure and you can see what beautiful work she does. Here it is, see what she's done for me? This is Regina's work. Side. Here's some more. So thank you, Regina and Ernie. Regina Foster. Ernie Moore. Thank you. And thank you for looking at me for so long. <laughs>